Love sports, love culture? Well, I've got a brand new podcast called Take Line from Crooked Media, hosted by me, Jason Concepcion, and two-time WNBA champion Renee Montgomery. From the games to the players to the issues happening both on and off the court, we'll be tackling the important political and social issues happening in sports head on. New episodes drop every Tuesday, so follow and subscribe on Radio.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your wages are being garnished. We can stop that now. It's hard enough to pay your bills when things are good, let alone when a big chunk of your take-home pay is gone before you even get your check. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné, and I can stop the garnishment and get the creditors off your back immediately, often the same day as our consultation. Both Chapter 7 and 13 provide bankruptcy relief, but choosing the right chapter is crucial. In a free consultation, we can create a plan to get your finances back under your control. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. On Saturday, October 27th, it's back. Bourbon and Bacon Fest. Oh, it's like kind of Halloween style when you think about it. October 27th, heading down to Tacoma, baby. You can join us during the day. How about during the night? Maybe both. Tacoma Armory is where we're going to be. And yeah, we've got distilleries coming from all over the country. And they're going to be giving you their finest spirits, my friends. And now then we get restaurants. Some of your favorite restaurants going, would you like some bacon-inspired treats? Mm, yes. Bacon. Yes. Bourbon, bacon, the combo that is heavenly. And yup, it's happening in Tacoma, October 27th. You want more info? You want tickets? Go to KISW.com for Bourbon and Bacon Fest, benefiting our friends at Treehouse. Let's play B Mix. It's time to play the game. Yeah. So everybody scream his name. B Mix. Don't be a loser. Whoa. B Mix. You're a loser. It is time to be. Wednesday, so we can whack him instead. Whack yeah. Whack it. Good to see everybody do their Mr. Wacky then. All right. Woo! Yeah, baby. I love it because it. everyone in this room does it. Of course, Dude, we, we do the wacky dance. <laughs> I, when I was at uh, Monday Night Raw, <laughs> Bailey comes out, and uh, part of her prop is that she comes out, and those giant Mr. Wackies pop up. You know? Oh, really? So <laughs> as soon as that happened, all I could think is, "Woo!" But no one else probably understood the hell I was talking about. But it was just like, <laughs> yeah, she knew. I, oh yeah, she knew. She knows Mr. Wacky. <laughs> she yeah, knows what's yeah. going on. Oh, I love those, dude. Those yeah. are awesome. I, I love how she comes those. out to those. Like a crap ton of them. Too. Whoa, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a posse right there. Yep, that sure is. Whack attack. A whack attack. Whack Whack it. Well, we'll have to see if we can get a whack attack on Steve today with Justin and Renton taking him on. Justin, are you there? Yes, sir. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Tickets to the sold-out Puddle of Mud and Tantric show that's happening over at the Clearwater Casino Resort on October 11th. Go to KISW.com for all the details. If you want to get tickets to the show, you have to win them. Win and them. you can win them all week on the Beat the Migs. <laughs> Beat the Migs. <laughs> all right, to Steve, get out of here. Hey, you bother me. Oh, geez. For those playing at home, Justin will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Justin, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. What statue with a human head and a lion's body can be seen near the pyramids of Giza, Egypt? Sphinx. Yes. What cartoon character was originally named Happy Rabbit? Bug Bunny. Yes. What is the name of the planter's mascot? Mr. Peanut. Yes. What film festival invades Park City, Utah every year? Um, pass. What food has the tagline, Milk's Favorite Cookie? Oreo. Yes. What war ended in 1865? The War of 1812? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be hell of a uh, war. Pass. If you see tripe on a menu, what internal organ is it? Uh, liver? No. <laughs> uh, Pat. Which U.S. president had to deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis? Uh, JFK. Yes. Mean Joe Green helped what team win four Super Bowls? Uh, was it the Packers? No. Uh, Pat. 
One, oh. two, three, four, five. Correct. Well, well, right down the middle there. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, it'll be a it'll be a close one. I feel. You think it will be? Yeah, oh. there's a couple of these I don't think that are in Steve's wheelhouse. But I mean, I mean, he surprised me many times here when I try to say that. Maybe Steve is almost smart, so you never know. And this is birthday. Whoa! I was like, wow, he almost complimented me. You, it's because it's my birthday. There yeah. you go. Yeah, Appreciate there's your you, BJ. There's your half a compliment for yeah. your birthday. Yeah. I would have liked a cupcake, but I'll take a compliment. <laughs> a mm, I would have liked a compliment. Brought you a cupcake. Too. Yeah. What? Everyone dropped the ball, BJ on this show. Sarah usually is the one that brings birthday gifts for people. Sarah! Oh, no. Why you hate me? Wow. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah, Why you kinda, always hate yeah. me? She didn't doom, bring anything doom, for you. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Are you ready? Damn, I will never twerk with her again. <laughs> okay. I don't blame you. Let that be known. Yeah. Let it be known. <laughs> Are you ready? I don't even know if I can continue, Rev. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, nope, yeah. Now nope. yeah, you're ready. The macho man's ready. <laughs> what statue with a human head and a lion's body can be seen near the... Centaur. P- near the pyramids of Giza, Egypt. No. Oh. <laughs> um, a minotaur. No. A Slapator. No. Slapator. What cartoon character was originally named Happy Rabbit? Bugs Bunny? Yes. Oh. What is the name of the really? planter's mascot? Oh, uh, Mr. Peanut. Yes. What film festival invades Park City, Utah every year? That would be Cannes. No. Oh, what the hell is on um Cannes? Oh, man. It was on Entourage, too. They always talk yeah, about it. Oh, was. crap. Brain uh, fart. Uh, I'll come back past. No. What food has the tagline, Milk's Favorite Cookie? Uh, Chips Ahoy? No. Oreo? Yes. yes. What war ended in 1865? War of 1812. No. Yeah. <laughs> Civil War. Yes. Good job. If you see tripe on a menu, what internal organ is it? Uh, liver? No. <laughs> Kidney? No. Stomach. Yes. Nice. Which U.S. president had to deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis? Ooh, I'm going to go with Nixon. No. Kennedy. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Happy birthday, Steve. You squeak by with the win. Oh. Six to five. Sorry about that, Justin. Trike was the decider. No problem. My yeah. hat's off to you, Steve. Thank you, my oh. friend. Have a great day. And it's typically an Italian dish, at least from what I understand. Is it? Yeah. That's something I never touch. Yeah, I what, think tripe? that's... Tripe? yeah. I thought we had it in Mexico, too. And don't they do it in pho? I have no idea yeah. because if I know about mouth. it... Oh, I thought it was totally Italian because that's oh. who we, we... I remember, like, my old Italian aunt would go, Hey, am I making a tripe? Uh, and I'm like, no, what is that? No, we don't want that. No. Yeah. They make menudo with it. Yep, that's right. Oh, really? Have, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, look fun. at me. You can get tripe in most fun places. If you if you hide Damn. it, I think it'll be fine. But if you tell me that there's tripe oh, in something, no. there's no way that I'm going to eat it. Oh, it's delicious. I, I'm not going to try it. So delicious. It's Is the it same really? thing with yeah. with tongue. I had tongue when I was a kid. Uh, yeah, exactly. No, I, I had it Whoa. as an adult again, and it's just very, nope, nope, nobody, nope. But yeah. So good, yeah. And Danny likes it. Whoa. Wow. I, I will eat Menudo all day long. Menudo, the band? Yeah, them too. <laughs> wow. Ricky Martin? <laughs> Huh? Ricky Martin was in Menudo. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow, Danny, yeah. That's how he got to be. Come on, Danny. What kind of dude? Because he was in that boy band. Bro, you work at a rock station. You don't know who was in Menudo? I don't <laughs> even know what Menudo. I didn't know that was a band. It was a boy band. Uh, Spanish boy band with like a bunch of uh, like little little boys, like what? 12-year-old boys or something. I think yeah, they may even went all the way up to like 18 or 19. Oh, really? Uh, okay. it, was a, it was a boy band from Mexico, I believe. And it was a rotating door. So as soon as you got too old, you got booted and they put someone new in. Gotcha. And, and that's where, uh, why do I know this much about Menudo? You know Menudo? a lot about <laughs> Menudo. It was a Puerto Rican based band. Oh, okay. So I don't know yeah. enough. Okay. I'm glad I was got some of it wrong. But Ricky Martin was once a member of Menudo. And I mean, that's how you know because it was your generation, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Truly enough. one of the best boy bands ever. Living yeah. La Vida Loca, yeah. Thank that's you. it, man. You're welcome. <laughs> the statue with a human head and the lion's body near the pyramid. You're going to hate yourself, Steve. Is the Sphinx. Oh, jeez. I should have yeah. really paid attention to the question. Probably yeah. and tried not to answer it before I uh, finished the question. I thought already. he would lose because of that question. He would be angry at himself. Yeah, it would yeah. set him off Sundance. on that one. That, whoa. That's the other one. Yes. I finally had a moment to stop thinking. <laughs> and it just, like, I was thinking too hard about it the entire game. And then it just I stopped using my brain and it came to me. <laughs> Which is pretty much how this show goes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. It really does. Sum so, up your career. Well, I stop using my brain and I say stuff. That's it. Congratulations, Steve. You stopped using your brain for that win, so you got six correct. Caller six is checking out the sold out puddle of mud and tantric show at Clearwater Casino. And that's caller number six, 206 421 Rock. Give it a call and you be a big winner. All right, look, man. 
As we talked about earlier, Danny's throwing a big Halloween party or a, yep. a pumpkin carving party. And according to this new survey, Danny, you've got 20 minutes or less to impress someone or they're going to leave your party. Oh, fair enough. So, what? Yeah, 20 minutes or less. So that they've got these tips of how you can make sure people will stay because you got to get them in the first 20. Wait, uh, maybe I'm clueless, but I, when I go to a party, I assume I'm in for not the long haul. It's not like I'm going to be there until they ask me politely to leave. It's 8 in the morning or anything like that. But I, I assume that I'm going to stay until a reasonable time. Like, I never think... I'm I'm going to go to a party, and if it's not awesome, I'm bailing. I, I just wonder, assume I'm going to stay. I'm the same way you are. I don't make other plans because I feel like I've said I'm committed to this party, but other people do. I have I have had people say, all right, well, I can only stay for this long. I got to go do – some people do like two, three parties in the same evening, and they tell me right oh. up front. They'll go, yeah, man, I can only stay for this, and I got some other engagements. And I'm like, wow, if I go to a party, I'm not like you. I'm in for the long haul. I'm glad my parents stay together. That whole idea of like having to go to multiple Christmas parties would have been just ridiculous. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, when you think about those kind of things, like I'm not that person. Once I show up to one place, that's all I'm doing for the rest of the night. But you have like this expectation when a bunch of people invite you. There's certain seasons, like in the summertime, everyone has parties. Like in August, it it just seems like there's party after party, and some people get really butthurt if you don't at least show up. Oh, see, like, those are not, those are the type of people I don't want to have as friends. That would right. be Sarah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, Sarah. That's yeah. probably why she didn't get me cupcakes. I yeah. didn't make it to her birthday party. Oh, even yeah, though I was dude. respecting your wishes. Yes. I, yeah, I, I don't think that you, a person right. your age, should be at her birthday party, but you know what? Oh, I'm, I'm, it costs you a cupcake. For I'm the right age to party with Sarah and her friends. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, sure. Hell yeah. You had Matthew McConaughey right over there. They'd be blessed to have me there. Oh, would they be? Uh, yeah. About the same maturity level. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I'm way more immature. Right. Yeah, that's a fact. So here's the thing. we got to help out Danny because we don't want people leaving his, his party. Okay. Because you got 20 minutes, Danny. you got to impress him. Here are the eight key elements of throwing a good party. Are you ready? Shots. Okay, Danny knows number one. Oh, I was, I was totally guessing. That's what we make everyone do when they come in is we all take a shot together. Yeah, you have to offer a drink right away. That's, yeah. Yeah, but people don't. Now, I don't. Well, what kind of party are you going to? Are you now, what offering is, a drink? Would you like something to drink? A beer, a wine, a shot? Yeah. yeah. Now, I will tell people, hey, there's alcohol there. There are the shot glasses, the sodas in the fridge. Feel free to help yourself. Is that good enough or do I have to I physically know. get it? No, I feel like that's fine. Yeah. At least you're leading them to water. Yeah, exactly. I lead or them all to the water. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm not much of a beer drinker, so I tell everybody, look, I bring your own beer because I'm not a beer guy. I'm a hard alcohol guy, so I always I have sodas and hard alcohol. The beer I don't provide. See, that last party I had was that Super Bowl party when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl, so it wasn't really a tough party to have. You Jeez, know? dude, you haven't had a party since? No, bro. My, one of my buddies spilled beer in the bathroom, and then parties have been... <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's too much anxiety for my wife, and I don't care. Like, I like going to parties. Yeah. I don't, I, I, if, if, the, uh, if I could eliminate the headache for her of having to host a party, that's fine by me. But, but I feel like besides the kitchen, that's like the best place to spill beer. I agree. Yeah. yeah. You have a great house for parties, too. I, I, I thought so, too. Yeah. I mean, I had a great time, and I'm glad I'm not spot. the guy that ruined it. But no. I would have been horrible if I was the guy that ruined parties in your house. So I'm glad it wasn't No, me. there was the one drunk guy that got a little too, like, emotional. Oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't even Danny. No. Yeah. Surprising. But then the other parties I ever held were uh, the ones where um, the, those were those 420 potluck parties. Oh, yeah. So people stayed for an extended period of time. Those are fantastic. Oh, yeah. Everyone got really stoned and watched yeah. UFC. That was a great time. And tried to deep fry stuff. Yes. That's when I found out that uh, uh, the uh, ding-dongs do not actually uh, fry well, deep fry well. And that's when I found out that if Thrill and I want to deep fry Twinkies, we got to remember to take the Twinkies out of the deep fryer and not go outside on the front on the back deck <laughs> and oh, have yeah. a two-hour conversation Yeah, and then realize that they've been deep frying that entire time. Oh, my God. I thought yeah. you were going to say remember Remember to take the wrapper off before you three deep. Me fry. too. We're smarter than that, Vicky. Yeah. I mean, we, he really? didn't say that he didn't do that either. Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't said either or on the wrapper part. Either way, and I we can use understand. pancake batter to deep fry them. Oh, they yeah, were delicious. Uh, yeah, you're right. I can see why your wife has said, oh, "Yeah, no yeah. more parties." Not the ones that we forgot to take out. The ones before yeah. that were delicious. Those were unedible. So here's the other thing you're supposed to do. You're supposed to talk to guests within eight minutes of them getting there. No. Yeah, you got to greet them and say, hey. I'm confused what kind of party this be, they're basing this off of. Do people just walk into your house and you don't bother to welcome them? I feel like when a party gets ro- rolling, if there's a lot of people, other people will let folks in the house. The doorbell rings and I might say, hey, would you get that? Yeah. But if I'm the host, maybe I'm the one that's supposed to be talking to them. Once you get enough people in there, sometimes you don't even see the host. But the minute you see someone new in your house, wouldn't you welcome them? Hey, would you like a tour or would you like a 
drink, something along those lines. When I was uh, when I held my housewarming party, uh, Glenn, who was on the mix cast with us, him and his wife showed up, and they just went into the backyard. I didn't realize they were there for like a half hour because I was at the bar drinking a lot, and so I finally I finally noticed them, and I ran over and said hi. But it was a little bit of a time, so sometimes people can sneak in. Yeah, well, if it's under if if, if it's not in the first eight minutes, so you got to get them a drink and welcome them in the first eight minutes. Are they gone? I feel like as a guest, though, my first instinct is to go find the host and say hello. Yeah. If they're not, like, completely super busy, be Whoa. like, hey, thank you so much for inviting me. It's and, good and, to be here. And am I alone in the, the mentality of that you show up with a gift to the house? Yes. So when for you're housewarming? Anything. anything. Oh, really? Oh, I mean, well, by uh, gift, I mean a bottle of wine. Oh, or, or, or like some puppies. kind of food. Or some yeah. snacks or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. people. You, well, the young people that show up at my house for my game, they, 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 a lot of them don't bring a thing. I wouldn't allow those back. They'd be off my game list. Yeah, I've, I've had to make the adjustment. I think it's the millennial generation. They don't have money, so they don't bring anything. There's a lot of times where I try to uh, uh, at least ask. Uh, I mean, when we do our gaming days and we go over to Chris's house, I will, I'll ask Chris, but usually he has a whole spread because you're very specific with the foods that you want to eat. I know, Chris is awesome. Hey, I go, I'll come to your house as long as you have every food that I like. <laughs> yeah, and so I'll be like, do we need anything? He's like, no, I think we're pretty good. And I'm like, oh, okay, then that's the only time that I don't bring something. No. Now, uh, in fairness, though, at least I tell Chris I give him money to buy those things. Oh, yeah, totally. I don't make him go out and buy it with his own money, at least. <laughs> I know. You're a giver. People See? my age think it's weird, though. Like, I've had boyfriends where I'm like, oh, we're invited to someone's house. It's spring flowers or a bottle of wine or. Flowers? Like, for the, the, the hostess. Ugh. Like, if, if you can't say, drink flowers, BJ, can you? I agree with if you. If they you don't can't. drink or if they, you know, they say, no, 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 we have everything here and you still want to bring something or if you're trying to impress Some people mother, love the future mother in law. You're right, Vicky. So it's amazing because I'm with Steve. Like, I, the last thing I'd want is flowers, but boy, I have brought flowers to a woman before at a at a place and it's amazing. Their eyes light up and I go, huh. I don't understand why because it's not food. Yeah, I'd rather bring that barbecued pork with the mustard in this. Yes. Thing. Why not both? Fine. <laughs> Vicky, you are, I think you're, you know, it's interesting. Again, I think it's the way you were raised. Oh, yeah. Because millennials just, they, they feel like we don't got cash, so we're not bringing anything. Even when we order food, I'll go, hey, who wants pizza? Everybody will weigh in. And only a couple of people will actually kick in cash when I order the pizza. Mm-hmm. So many don't. And they'll have the pizza. And their attitude is, well, I, I think the attitude is, if you're hosting the party, then I don't have to pay and I'll come to your party. I think that's a millennial thing. Not all millennials, but I think that's just a young person. I ain't got no dough. No, my mom, anytime I'd go, out, hey, I'm going to go to my friend's house for dinner. She's like, what are you bringing? I'm like, what do you mean? What am I bringing? She's like, well, you need to bring something. So oh, we have yeah, to go to do. the store and get a cheesecake or whatever it was. Cheesecake's a good call. Right? Yeah, I think it's a dying art. I hope, I wish people would do it, but I don't know, man. I think in 20 years, you're going to see people just go, well, if you invited me over, I don't bring anything. You're just lucky to have my presence. I I hate to say it, but some people have that. I had one dude. Remember the dude that complained that I didn't have the right kind of mixer for the alcohol that I was giving him for free? Because I was uh, I was on a diet and I was like, look, I'm not going to get regular, you know, regular sodas. I'm going to have my own sodas. But I was mixing my alcohol with that. And he was pissed off. He goes, you know, I like a certain brand of cola to mix with my rum and you don't have it. What the hell? And I'm looking at it. Bring it. That's exactly what I was looking at going. So you're complaining that the free rum I'm giving you doesn't taste good with the free mixer I'm giving you. And I told you that I didn't have it on the little email blast I told everybody that this is what I got. So what's your problem? And there's a store about five minutes away. You could literally go there and for what? Five dollars, get the soda you want. I, you know, and still I'm getting this, I'm getting grief. The only time we've ever shamed someone for the type of alcohol they brought, it was more just as a goof because, you know, our hockey team, we, we the donkeys, whenever we go out drinking or whenever we go on our trips, right, ever, we're just obsessively always getting Coors Lights. So one time when Ted first started coming with us on our trips, he showed up with like, you know, a, a 24 pack of Miller Lite. We're like, bro, oh. you can't come on the bus with that. You know, of course we're going to drink it. You know, yeah. and, and then once we discovered Costco's got the cheap light beer, we got like, let's get that too. That saves us a couple dollars. But, nice. you know, the running joke was always, you can't come on unless you bring the Coors Light. That's awesome. But, you know, not, not, at the end of the day, no one's saying no to free beer. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, a, it's a very interesting thing, man. How about the first? I know um, uh, a guy will bring beer to a party. When it's time for him to leave, he'll take those beers that are left with him. Yeah. Boo. 
Now, so wrong. I will let people take stuff home because I don't want to be tempted by it. Like I'll have a, I call it my cheat day. Then I'll tell people, look, I know you brought those and you'll probably want to leave them, but I don't want to eat them, so take them back. But normally, you're right. You should leave stuff at a party. What about this? I, we have a buddy that would make it a point whenever he would have like an empty bottle of Patron from whatever drinking endeavors that he was on, he would refill it with cheaper tequila oh, and bring that to the party to look like the stud that brought the Patron. Yeah. And he'd even have the box. Like he would fully oh. bring it like that. He, in fact, he brought it to the Super Bowl party that way. That is hysterical. And then the, the guy who spilled the beer was like um, like drinking it and thinking, this is so awesome, free Patron. Like he thought it was the best thing ever. That's hysterical. <laughs> I love that. That's great, actually. I, That's yeah. outside the box thinking there. I mean, and he leaves the bottle. So it's not See, like it's, Yeah, so there it works perfectly. And if nobody could tell the difference, what does it matter? Well, and most of us knew, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little nervous because I'm, of course, going to my uh, 40th high school reunion this weekend. And, oh, this uh, is weekend? Yeah, and number five on the list, I think, is a rule that should be happening at every gathering. And, of course, I'm wondering, I feel like I'm going back to Boston. A lot of people have strong opinions. Number five that I hope we don't get into, don't talk about politics or money. And I feel like, oh, gosh. I mean, I, I think about it. We're all in our 50s, and we haven't seen each For me, I haven't seen these people probably in 40 years because I this is my first reunion that I've gone to. So I'm hoping it doesn't go into, so what do you think about this political situation? Oh, man. And I'm just like, oh, I, I just want to have fun, and you know, I don't want to talk about politics with anybody. But if you're stuck in like a circle of people, like you know, sometimes you branch off into like little, little groups, pods of people talking, and it's a group of people that you're really not feeling it, you should just drop that bomb and walk away back. So how about Trump? And then just walk off. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. a good way to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drop a grenade and go somewhere else. Because on the flip side, whenever I'm at a gathering where that starts happening, where people get in depth, like, you know, a little political talk doesn't bother me, but when it gets a little heated, that's my cue to go into the uh, other room and get some food. Yeah. Like, all right, peace out, guys. This yeah. is boring. Yeah, I, I know, man. I just, oh, because it, it gets loud. You know, Northeast people, it just gets loud. Plus, there'll be some alcohol. I'm like, oh, oh man, I'm pumped for you. This is the big weekend. It's the big weekend. I'm excited, man. I'm also nervous because, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, because I'm me. I don't want to, you know, I'm the never been a guy that's been the greatest at parties. No. Thanks, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a listener who texted in this story about the, quote, dumbest human in the world, and we think they're 100% right. What did this person do? I'm going to tell you at 717 on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. K-I-S-W, The Rock of Seattle. Yesterday, we got this text message. Uh, it said, BJ and Miggs, I just saw the dumbest human in the world. She was driving her Subaru in Marysville with her trunk wide open. And she kept opening and shutting her driver door. How does she not hear that her tailgate is wide open? And that's why the alarm is going off. Wow. I, that person might be right. That might be the dumbest person in the world. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I saw that right. You know, sometimes we don't have time to read all the text. I was like scouring through, and I see that one. I'm just like, very random text to send it, but very awesome. And it goes well with this other story we came across this morning about this idiot passenger on a flight. Uh, this happened on American Airlines. It was a flight from Phoenix to Boston. Had to land in Kansas City on Monday after a drunk passenger wouldn't sit down and started doing pull-ups on one of the overhead bins. Can they hold weight? Ah, well, yeah, we think about it. They put a lot of stuff in them. Oh, you yeah, know, that's a very good point. They, they probably can hold a lot of weight because of all of the, tr- the all of the luggage we put up there. Yeah, I just assumed that the plastic would start ripping off. But you're right, I guess, yeah. if you hold it the right way. Yeah. They should have workout poles on top. Yeah, why not? And stripper poles on bottom. Yeah. yeah. You, I, who doesn't love a drunk guy doing pull-ups? And they, plus, if you see how it is, I mean, somebody in that seat that has to have that groin in their face when he's doing that. Mm. Yeah, that's fun for everybody but the people in that row. Yeah. Because oh. I would enjoy it if it's not my row. Because I would like to see how far he can go. That's why I don't like the back row of a plane. Because people wait to go to the bathroom, and then when they have to go by each other, someone puts their butt right in your seat every time because they have to make yeah. room. Don't ever get a back seat on a plane because of that. It's all right when you're window, though. You don't have to worry oh, about that. Oh, window's okay. Yeah. Aisle is a bit of a pain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. So uh, David was on this flight with the uh, pull-up drunk guy. He was leaning up against... The, uh, where you put the bags overhead and a passenger came by and said, what are you going to do, some pull-ups? And the guy actually grabbed onto it and started doing some pull-ups on the plane in front of everybody. The flight attendant uh, probably asked him about three or four times to sit down and he refused to sit down. 
And then he really got verbally abusive with her. Uh, started calling them names, uh, profanity. Security came onto the plane to go ahead and get him. Oh, I'd be so angry because, of course, they had to, you know, they had to do a landing right in Kansas City. So that, you know, delays my flight. Unreal. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. So how about that? That guy, a genius. Now it's the lukewarm topic of the day. So based on the text we received about the dumb driver, the story about the dumb drunk guy doing pull ups on a plane. What about you? When did you see the dumbest human in the world? Or maybe you were the dumbest human in the world. 206-421-ROCK, text us at 77999. When did you see the dumbest human in the world? Or perhaps were you the dumbest human in the world? You call us in your text after Foo Fighters on The Rock. BJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. We got a text from... Uh, a person about a dumb driver driving around with their uh, their trunk open, not knowing what was going on. Then we got a story today about a drunk guy on an airplane uh, who was doing pull-ups and wouldn't sit down, so they had to actually do an emergency landing in Kansas City, which well, was halfway where they were going. In all fairness to that guy, somebody said, what are you going to do, some pull-ups? And... If you ask, you shall receive. Yeah, yeah. So we should throw both of them off the plane the uh, the the the, the pull up guy and the person that re- yes. suggested it. Okay. But either way, you know what? We've, we're talking about dumb humans, and we want to know when did you see the dumbest human in the world, or when were you the dumbest human in the world? Two zero six four two one Rock. Text us at seven seven nine nine nine. Let's go to Michael and Elma. Michael, you are on the Rock. Good morning. Good morning, Michael. What you got for us, buddy? Well, in 2013, I was uh, leaving the state of Alaska, and my flight was delayed because some idiot came on with a full set of uh, moose antlers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and yeah, that's a nice thing. He he argued with the uh, flight attendants about whether or not he could fit it in the overhead bin. The moose yeah. antlers. I would think for so many reasons you just don't want moose antlers uh, in the upper part of the plane for so many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it really is. And so, I'm trying to figure out a way to wear them. Uh, oh, well, would, would and these things are huge. I mean, they're they're not. Yeah, see, they're moose they antlers. Clearly, do not fit in the little. Uh, they're not Rudolph the antlers, Steve. Thing. I okay. know. All right. I was uh, clearly being sarcastic, Michael. Okay. How were you though? Were you? I know it's your birthday. You say know. you're smart sometimes. Maybe not. <laughs> but I, uh, I, so how long did that take, Michael? Because I take they a lot of flights. bigger than I thought, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're huge, too, those antlers. Did, did it delay yeah. you much? How long did it take? Did they have to kick him off the plane? No, no, no. They finally got him to check the bags, but it took him 20 minutes, three uh, flight attendants. Uh, <laughs> the guy just wouldn't, you know, check him. Yeah, I say, I, you know, it is interesting how other people, you know, you just know those are folks that just don't do much. You know what I mean? Those are because he's coming from Alaska. I don't know how, many, how often he travels. He's just not used to city living. You know how they say that city folk just don't get it? Right. Sometimes country folk just don't get it either. You know, and you, know, you can't be bringing moose antlers into the cabin. You just can't. Well, maybe he's had good luck in the past with it. Oh, he has. Well, all right. Maybe he has. I, I don't know. Maybe he flies all the time with his moose antlers. I have to tell you, in all my years of flying so far with the good I folks in Alaska, it. I have uh, our chief football officer, Russell Wilson, has never at all to come on the plane with moose antlers. That is Same. shocking. Yeah. It was tremendous. Yeah, well, person says, I saw an old lady is via text at a gas station pouring gasoline all over her windshield from the pump. Oy! She must have thought it was water. Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh no. come on. No, she didn't do that. And she was smoking a cigarette. No, that part's not true. Uh, <laughs> it's like Zoolander. Gasoline fight. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, God. That is no. I, I, let's go to Brian and Whidbey Island. Brian, uh, when did you see the dumbest human in the world, or was it you? Uh, I was the dumbest human in the world. Uh, first thing, happy birthday, Steve. Oh, man, thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Yeah. He finally caught up to BJ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Just kidding. It finally happened, Steve. You're in the rocket chair nope. in front of the lawn with me. Fortunately, he's still ahead of me. Yeah, I know. That'll never uh, change. <laughs> All right, Brian, how about you? What, what happened, man? <laughs> 
So this was actually yesterday. I was talking to the men's room because they were saying how this lady got trampled by an elephant when she got too close to take a selfie. And I went to Africa in 2013, and they told us if an elephant charges you, you're supposed to take off your clothes and run because they'll trample the clothes. And I didn't see any reason why not to believe them because I'm like, all right, they're talking about life and death situations. I, I, it's serious. I would believe that, too, to be honest with you. I mean, right? I don't know anything about elephants. That seems like a reasonable idea. Right? I was like, all right, that's fair enough. Maybe they smell the clothes. Maybe it's the color or something. Yeah, no. Ten minutes later, after I get done with my call, someone's like, I'm from Tanzania. That's just something we say to the tourists as a prank. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Just put my head down for a second. I just had to recoup. That's fantastic. At least you didn't do it, though, right, Brian? I mean, no, you, I didn't. Yeah, but see, I talked really confident when I was uh, talking. Uh, when I was talking uh, to all of them, like, this is what you got to do. Uh, oh a, no, oh, man! I see what you're saying. So you're telling the dudes in the men's room, you're like, hey, look, this. If you ever have an elephant coming your way, this is the only way to live. And, uh, <laughs> it's because then they see your trunk, and then they think everything's cool. Oh, is that what yeah. it is? Uh, oh, right. buddy. Oh, I appreciate that, Brian. I, I again, I. I would be the same guy. And as a matter of fact, I think I would have just started naked going, well, I'm going to be naked right now just in case there's an elephant coming at me. I'll be ready. I'll be super ready. <laughs> I'll just take my clothes and throw them. I won't even have them on. I have one buddy that's so good at seeming that he's serious that I feel gullible. And I'm usually good at picking up on people being, you know, saying something and not fall for it. But my one buddy's a wrestler, Cody Chun. And just yesterday, no, Monday night, I saw him because he was wearing, he was used as an extra talent with the WWE. He's a really good wrestler. And I'm like, hey, how was the experience? What was it like being backstage? He's like, it was great. I'm like, dude, and Undertaker and Kane showed up. That must have been awesome. He goes, yeah, they were backstage just hanging out playing chess before they went out there. It was crazy. I was like, no way. Undertaker and Kane played chess? And he's like, no, man, I'm just messing with you. They were just waiting to go out there. And I was like, I oh, dang it, I'm an idiot. I would have thought that, too, though. I would have been just as gullible. It's unbelievable that the dead man and his yeah. brother are playing chess together. Why not? We don't know what they like to do in their spare time. They are performers. How about the first as a woman in Redmond a few weeks ago was at the gas station and spent 50 minutes trying to find the gas tank on the Tesla that she was driving. <laughs> oh, please don't do that. Oh, gosh. The attendant took pity and told her it doesn't need gas. Aw. Uh, so she, that couldn't have been her car. She had to be borrowing it. Or maybe she just bought it and didn't bother to hear the uh, <laughs> the breakdown of I what mean, it does. I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, that's the whole idea. Well, how do you not know that if you're borrowing it? You should, I mean, it's... Yeah, somebody should let you know this car never needs... Whoa, I think we need to take her for an examination. <laughs> Seriously, man. I mean, how do you, yeah, how do, that's the first thing you tell somebody. Oh, go, cool news. This car never needs anything but a charge. I would have just watched and see how long it took until she finally <laughs> gave up. Oh, man. Let's go to Joe in Tacoma. Joe, you are on the rock. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Joe. So how about you? When did you see the dumbest person in the world or were you the dumbest human in the world? I was the dumbest person in the world. Oh, here we go. I love my people. All right. What'd you do? <laughs> So I, uh, it was a late start um, when I was in high school, and my parents had left for work, and I I was outside waiting for the bus and realized I forgot uh, like a binder or something. So um, I went back to my house and um, realized I also didn't have the keys to the house. Oh, you all right? So, that- yeah, and we we lived in uh, San Jose, California at the time, and it's like it was close to the airport. And all the windows are dual pane, so it's very difficult to break in, like, through a window. Oh, yeah. So I, my genius idea was to get a pickaxe and then break down the garage, the side garage door. That's it. Yeah, so I, in my head, I was, I thought that if I make a hole big enough to where I could climb through, I would be good instead of just making a hole big enough to where I can reach in and unlock the door. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and how'd that go for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my parents were pissed and I had to pay for a door a couple weeks later. That's what we expected. What did that run you? Uh, it was only like 50 bucks, but oh, right. when you're a teenager, that's quite a bit of money. Yeah, that's I mean, a year's salary. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, you have probably, have probably one of the cheaper doors. I mean, as opposed to, if you get one of those awesome doors that are really super thick and, you know, I would have been so angry. I mean, that's the kind of thing as a parent go, I don't want my kid to be pickaxing my door. <laughs> Luckily, for the most part, my kids didn't do any pickaxing, but, you know, you got you got the genius kids that, like, you know. Oh, dude, I love this text message. It's fantastic. Someone says, I was the dumbest human when my mom and sister told me that for my sports physical, the doctor's going to tell me to bend over and check my prostate. 
So when the doctor said it was time for the quote unquote awkward check, I dropped my pants, turned around and bent over. The doctor laughed and said, no, I need to see the other side. So she checked my boys for lumps. I was so embarrassed. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Oh, it was tremendous. Oh, <laughs> man. Your mom and sister are awesome. They are horrible as well. So, you know, I, I hope you got them back good for that. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go to uh, let's go to Rob in Kirkland. Rob, you are on the rock. All right, BJ, I uh, was a wonderful human being this day. It was about 10 years ago. My wife wanted to go Christmas shopping, so she went to this uh, Christian shop up in Kirkland. And how, and, old, how uh, old were you at the time? 10 years ago, you said? It was about 10 years. I was about 30. All right. Yeah, about 25, 30. Okay, so, you know, you're young. You're still learning how not to be as dumb, but then again, you're still young and dumb. And you know how uh, Christmas shopping with uh, the wife or girlfriend at the time is. Yeah, expensive. So I was tired. It was a long day. There were these horses sitting around, and uh, I'm like, God, oh, like, this looks like a nice comfy spot to sit, these little rocking horses. The I'm little like, kid okay, rocking horses? Yeah, they're about maybe two and a half feet tall. And I'm like, okay, cool. And so I sit down, I hear this huge crunch sound, and I'm like, yeah. oh, gosh. Uh, they were paper mache horses. Oh! Oh! And oh, I man. destroyed the horse. Oh, I fell no. on the ground, and I'm like, and the lady that worked for the store was sitting right there, and she looks at me, and she's like, you broke that. I'm like, I, uh, I didn't know what to say. And she's like, you owe, you got to pay for it. I'm like, all right, how much is it? And she's like, $200. And I'm like, Whoa. what? For that? I'm like, it's made of paper. I'm like, I'm not going to pay $200 for it. And she was like, they're going to call the cops Damn. and all this. And she made me want to pay for it. I gave her 20 bucks. And I, my, <laughs> my wife and girlfriend at the time was like, I don't know you. I yeah. really don't know I you. Don't I'm like, honey. Is. She's like, yeah. Send him to jail. Yeah. Take him to jail. Damn. Man. 200 bucks for a piece of paper. I agree, dude. And, and, this and, damn and, art and, stuff and, is getting out of hand. I thought he sat on a kiddie's thing, but it looks like he thought it was a full-size horse, at least. Okay, they, that would support him. Oh, that's a beating. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm picturing one of those ones with the little spring in the yes. ground. He's kind of like, those are fun, even yeah. as an adult. What? Okay. You've never gone on one, Rev? No. No, no as, an adult, well, as an adult, he's asking. Not, I mean, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, as an adult, yeah. I have not, no. Yeah. It's a good core exercise because, oh. you know, of our size. You just typically oh. tip, just bend, you just tip over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, okay. Okay, so you got to really use your core. Yeah. Okay. Get that balance going, BJ. Well, I might have to try that because they said the i got to work on my core. I'll ride the horse. Yeah, go to a kid's park today. Hey, you know what? I can do that. <laughs> Uh, we got to talk about this former baseball player who just shared a great story about a time that Ken Griffey Jr. loaned him something expensive, and then Jr. refused to take it back after he found out how that player used it. You're going to hear from this baseball player at 747 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, if you're upside down in your mortgage, should you continue to make the payment? Continuing to pay your mortgage or not is a complex decision because you're going to have to pay to, to live somewhere. You're going to have a housing payment. So continuing to make your house payment really depends on several factors. One is whether or not you have a second mortgage. Um, the second one is how affordable your ongoing monthly mortgage payment is. Uh, another uh, issue is whether your mortgage is adjustable and you're facing an increase in your mortgage payments later on when interest rates go up. If you do have a second mortgage in this economy with the housing prices being down, oftentimes we can reduce we can take off or strip off that second mortgage in a Chapter 13 case so that you'd only have the first mortgage to continue to pay. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. Love sports? Love culture? Well, I've got a brand new podcast called Take Line from Crooked Media, hosted by me, Jason Concepcion, and two-time WNBA champion Renee Montgomery. From the games to the players to the issues happening both on and off the court, we'll be tackling the important political and social issues happening in sports head on. New episodes drop every Tuesday, so follow and subscribe on Radio.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.